Welcome, everybody. Welcome to race eight of the Twiggy Eye Racing Series in 2023. It's the Lucky State 200, and we're under the lights here in Las Vegas Motor Speedway. One half mile intermediate oval. It's going to be a fun one here tonight after what has been a very, really ecstatic and all guns blazing first seven races. I'm Carmen Hardy alongside me. My co-commentator on Sunday evenings is here with me here tonight, Kevin Young. Las Vegas, we've been here before. We've seen a thing or two here. We've done a thing or two here. Vegas in the Xfinity cars. What are we looking forward to tonight? Well, looking at some of the uh, situations beforehand, when we heard a bunch of drivers talking about it, it's going to be a lot of flat-out racing, per se, to a degree, with a little bit of lift. As the run goes on, though, we are going to see those drivers have to, at the very least, lift as the tire wear comes down. But we're going to see a lot of these drivers just being able to run it full throttle, especially up front. So it's going to be a, a situation where battling dirty air just a bit to try to get the car planted and being able to lift and not run down the driver ahead of you. Temperatures, obviously it's a night race, so temperatures are going to be a little bit more favorable than what it would have been during the day here. Obviously, we're in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's the desert. Um... As hot as it is during the daytime, it's equally as cool at night. 77 degrees, the air temp, it's a very warm and, and rather dry 77 degrees here on track. Track temp, only 80 degrees. Not a lot of track and air temp var uh, variation here tonight, which is going to help out a lot. At Here at Las Vegas, you can see about 120 degrees, the track temp, and it'll eat those tires up. Obviously, as, you, as, as Kevin just mentioned there, with the lower temperatures, it should be pretty well flat out here, kind of as far as like the action we're going to be seeing here tonight as we get ready to get underway. Again, race 8 of 36 in the Twiggy Eye Racing Series season. Richmond was last week. Next week, we go to uh, Martinsville. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a lot of fun there. Top 5 on the board as we kind of move away from the race intro. Obviously, we have SDK back up and running. It wasn't working on Monday, but it was working on Tuesday, and it's working here tonight, at least for me. Um, unfortunately, not completely uh, technical difficulty free. Kevin's having issues of his own. Well, actually, uh, uh, I think I figured out what the problem was, but uh, I think we'll be getting it running quite shortly, so I think awesome. my problems will be solved quickly here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Obviously, practice almost over. It's Brady Weileman for Summit Esports at the top of the board. Then Merrick Watchorn, Kyle Smith, Alec Daffin, and Lilac Seer top five here in practice as we get ready to see things kind of come to a close. Kind of taking a look here. A lot of cars on the back straightaway. That's Merrick Watchorn on the back straightaway. That was as well as, I believe, I believe Brad Slagle. Kyle Smith just moved to the fourth position for turn three Esports. So some good running here for him. Checker flag is going to come out in practice. We're going to have 23 cars on track tonight. We have found our main stay group. Mm -hmm. Qualifying about to begin, though, here in Las Vegas. First car on track, it's actually going to be that of John Buwalda. The Baltimore, Maryland native for fast lane racing. Career best finish fifth. He finished third in the Clash, the Twiggy Clash at Southern National at the beginning of the season. But that wasn't a points race. So we'll see him get ready to get running here. This qualifying gets underway. Pull our just a little timing tower up. Everyone's got five minutes. And that time ticks away quickly here as you look at Bawara in the number five. Start his run. A lot of cars on track here. Zier, Holiday, Howell, Crosby, Betts, Elkins, Stanley, Ledger, Hernandez, Slagle. Obviously, Bawara we're looking at right now. Wileman, Watchor, and Smith, Buchanan. RJ Buchanan making his day first race of the season here tonight. And Maurice Gamillion on the board, on track at the moment, getting ready to set lap times. 
Yeah, there's always a kind of a situation at the very least. Some drivers like to, like we always see, some drivers like to go out quite early, put down a time in the short range of time. Other drivers like to wait to the last minute and be the uh, showman of the field, or the show woman, or the show whatever, to set down a time. So it's quite of a hit or miss situation. Some want to set, the, like I said, be up there early. Some like to be late, and we'll see how it all shapes out. But right now, uh, top of the board is going to be... Buat, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. currently top of the board here with about three minutes and some change to go. Watchhorn just went fastest, put Buwada down to second place. We'll see if Buwada's second lap's any better. It looks like it will be better, but by how much? Not enough to challenge for pole position. Wileman goes top of the board. Look at Chris Phillips, who's about to start his run. Series rookie in the number six in that Flow Racing Toyota. Weileman, Zier, Betts, Hernandez. Watchorn goes back to second fastest. We'll see if Zier can get any faster here, but times, they are falling. Kyle Smith goes third fastest. Where does Chris Phillips go? Little loose there out of turn two. See what happens here with Chris Phillips's first lap. Where does it place him in the field? Only 15th fastest at the moment. Chris Phillips' second lap. What's it going to look like here? James yeah, Thompson. Here. Yeah, James Thompson, Maurice Gamillion, Alec Daffin on laps as well. Second lap in the books for Phillips. Does he improve? He does not. Thompson, however, goes. Tenth fastest. Gamillion on his second lap did not have a valid first lap. And this lap's not going to be any, any better for Gamillion here. We'll look at last week's winner, Alec Daffin. A few drivers have not yet set qualifying times. Josh Jernigan, Kelly Page, and Maurice Gamillion has burnt both of his laps, so he won't set a time. And Kyle Dersham has just joined the pit lane, so we'll join up with him shortly. Daffin, this is his... One, I believe this is his warm-up lap, so he's only going to get one chance to go for pole. I got, got a lot of time here. He's going to have to have some good sectors here to really put something uh -huh. down here. It looks like Dershon's also going to be in the position of only being able to set one lap. The one positive is the first lap does seem to be the quicker lap here, so but he's going to have to put a, put up a shut-up, basically, for both these drivers in Alex Daffin and Kyle Dershman. Coming off the last couple corners here, that number 48 machine. What can he do to put down a time? He's going to have to try to jump to the top beat at 30.49. And it's third. only going to be good enough for third. So it is going to put him close to the front, but not enough for pole position. And here comes Kyle in the 93. But I don't think he's going to have enough time to even put down one lap. Mm, it's close. Two. Out of four. Check out flight comes out, and then there's a little bit of a reprieve. So he's going to... He nope. will not. Wow. Timed it just a bit short there. All righty. That makes things interesting. Again, you can say that again. Going into the race, 77 degrees, the air temp. 79 degrees, it's getting colder, the track temp. 57% humidity next to no wind makes it pretty easy here going into this race. Again, for those that are kind of just tuning in and filtering in, I'm Carmen Hardy. Next to me, Kevin Young. Obviously, we're typically here on, on Sunday evenings, but we're also here tonight at Las Vegas with the Twiggy Racing Series. On your screen is the starting grid. Brady Weileman, pole position for Summit Esports ahead of Merrick Watchorn. Alec Daff and Kyle Smith will make up row number two. Lilac Sear and Doug Betts will make up row number three. Then Matthew Dyer, Patrick Hernandez will be in row four. Jacob Elkins, John Holiday in row five. Then James Thompson and Dennis Crosby will sit in row number six. Looking down the rest of this 24-car field, 
You got Chris Howell and R.J. Buchanan, Harley Barletta and John Bawada in row eight. Row nine, John Ledger and Chris Phillips. Row 10 is Brad Slagle and Jack Stanley. Maurice Gamillion and Kyle Dershow. And we saw Gamillion fail to qualify or set a qualifying time. Kyle Dershow failed to meet the time as well. Kelly Bajan did not attempt the time. Neither did Josh Jernigan, who will round out the very tail end of this 24 car field. Everyone getting ready to go, waiting for Maurice Gamillion and Alec Daffin to join the grid so we can begin the formation lap here in Las Vegas. Again, for everyone that's tuning in, we appreciate you spending your, your Friday evening with us here on ABN. Tomorrow and Sunday, we're dirt racing, both in the oh. Saturday Night Showdown series for ARCs as well as the Ace Career Cup series on Sunday. So we get to do something a little different. We don't do it very often, but that's what comes of this weekend. All I'm saying is I hope you brought your Tide Sticks. It's for myself. I know I brought a good old bottle of Mr. Sparkle to help clean out some of those tough stains. Mr. Sp that's, uh, that's fun. I've not heard in a while. <laughs> uh, for me, you can hang uh, out with me more often. <laughs> right? Some Simpsons references. <laughs> gotta get me, you, and Christian Gomez together for some FIFA. Oh, we gotta. Uh, you gotta. Um, Brady Wild in America. Clubs. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Hopefully with the new hopefully with EA Sports FC, hopefully that becomes a thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, we begin the formation lap here again. Brady Wildman pole position. It's been the Brady. It's been the Summit Sports versus Mer Watch Journey Motorsports battle all season long. Obviously, um, Daffin got the team's first win this season last week at Richmond Race Seven. Merrick Watchorn won four in a row between Atlanta to it was if Sonobo's where the streak broke. I'm trying to remember mm -hmm. the race that he, the last race that he won, uh, would have been Auto Club. Uh, Auto, Auto Club, Iowa. It was Auto yeah. Club, Iowa, Phoenix, and Atlanta. Just looking over the standings right here. Yeah, so he's looking for career win number 20 in this series, the number 91 of Watchorn. Uh, Weilman looking for his first win in this series, and Daffin obviously looking for now his third career win. A lot of ups and downs. Las Vegas is going to be a completely different challenge than what we typically see. The lights are on. The sparks will fly tonight. Pace car pulls off into pit lane. It's Weilman, Watchorn, Daffin, Smith. Green flag is in the air, and the Lucky State 200 is underway. It looks like a good, clean start for most of the pack there. You can already see the 51 of Weilman uh, going to try to cover up the high side here. Now going to uh, dump back low here, try to block off. He's basically going to be trying to charge the lanes here and kill the runs, and then you'll see Daffin slide up in the second position, takes a good run on that inside line, but he's going to be under pressure here from Watchhorn right going into the next corner here. So right now, 51 cent in the pace, but don't let him get too comfortable up front. Obviously, it's going to be pretty blistering here early on. His caution's already yep. come out. Um, We had a few cars come off. Harley Beretta went off track. Jacob Elkins as well. Looks like it happened coming off to the trial off of four. Alkins with a lot of damage on that number nine. Oh, it happened a little bit before. Yeah, definitely off of four here, and it looks like we're already kind of in it. You can see a car Ooh. a little sideways. Yeah, you're looking at. We'll, we'll kind of take this slow here. We're look. Jacob Alkins, number nine, center of your screen. He is behind the number seven. That's mm -hmm. Matthew Dyer. That's near the front of the field too. He's in between Matt Dyer in the seven and Doug Betts in the three. And both the seven and the nine get loose. And Daffin just overcorrects sharply. That's in front of Patrick Hernandez. Obviously, he gets into Barletta there. Yep, that explains Barletta's off track. And then obviously, he kind of blinks out of our frame shot there. Mm hmm. So. Just kind of shows that these cars can be a little bit of a handful to drive coming off court, especially on a cold track on a cold night like this. Sometimes it's a bit hard to plan it, so just can show if you get a little bit loose, sometimes it's hard to save it. Go on board with uh, Jacob Elkins. Just going to see what he was dealing with, because again, Matt Dyer had the same issue. It just Elkins overcorrected there. Out of the throttle early. And just that overcorrect, that snap overcorrect, and... But he's going to use his fast repair early and get back out there. Yep. 
Okay, that's what the fast pair is for. We'll get it nice fixed up. Now the question is, it's a little bit too early probably for the field to make pit stops because it's so early in the race. We may see maybe one or two drivers maybe take a chance here and maybe stick it down pit lane, try to get off sequence, but so early, it almost doesn't make sense, but I've seen weirder things happen in hosted races and officials. 100 cars for the first time for a multi-car incident that involved Jacob Elkins, Harley Barletta, Patrick Hernandez, and others. Top four is going to be some of these fours at the front of the field with Brady Wildman and Alec Daffin sharing the front row. Then Merrick Watchorn starting inside row two alongside Kyle Smith with Lilac Zier and Doug Betts row three, Matt Dyer and James Thompson in row number four. That Wildman has a little bit of latency issues. Yeah. I know that I know we called a leak. He was also in a little bit while back, and he had some latency issues there too. So it's always not a good sight, especially when you get latency, because it always can cost you positions if you have a big blink or kind of make you a menace where maybe race control will have to step on in. So he's hoping it kind of settles up nicely here to fix out. Yeah, it's been on and off for a while, Lemon. Um, obviously, he got he's, he's got two podiums in a row, podiumed at Sonoma and then podiumed last week at Richmond. So on a bit of a roll here. In the number 51 machine, we're still looking for the top step. He's finished third. He's finished second. He's looking for that one step higher, and it's going to be a little bit tough here. Obviously, you look at 133 laps, 199.5 miles, tending to the race distance. No stages in this series either, so yeah, it is straightforward. <laughs> the way the NASCAR gods intended, up until uh, 2015. <laughs> <laughs> the way Bill France Senior intended. <laughs> 12, all 24 cars still running in this contest. Top 20 on the left-hand side of your screen. Pace car is going to take the hard left into pit lane. For the first time, our first restart of the race comes to a head. Green flag back in the air. We're racing once again in Las Vegas and a really good restart by Watchorn. Gets right to the inside of Daffin. And should be able to clear here. At least coming off the next corner because Daffin's not going to get the run off he needs. Well, I guess he proved me wrong as he'll be side by side going off into three. Tag of the wall there by a car further in the back of the field. But yes, so far, that... still good. Keep an eye out. People clipping that white line. Uh, trying to hug that white line on the uh, really defining the apron from the racetrack it's a pretty abrasive transition here at las vegas a lot of uh banking in the corner that is door to door no love loss there to racing uh, hard while trying to help his teammate out with the draft but watch one hanging right there with him yeah, right now, you don't want to burn up your stuff too quick here, and this is what the 51 kind of wants to see. These two cars running side-by-side side for so long, it's going to allow the tires to burn on up. It may allow the 51 a little bit more of a reprieve late in the run. But right now, they are hauling from the car in fourth, which is currently uh, Smith, who's just about about eight temps behind. Yeah, it's and that's sort of the thing that gets difficult here, and, and you're going to see it kind of spread out. Obviously, Kevin, you're kind of new to the Twiggy iRacing series, it's going to be very lights out early on as we're seeing here from this top three. And then it'll spread out as the race goes on. Obviously, tire will become a factor. This is an older surface. Um, it's uh, Obviously, it's a night race, but it's still a warmer surface than we would be expecting at a place. You know, if we look at Kansas, if we look at Kentucky, it's still hotter than what it would be over in those tracks, those mile and a half that are also D-shaped ovals. So... There is still going to be an emphasis on being conservative and saving your stuff. But right now, these top three are nose to tail, and they are trying to walk away. They've opened up eight tenths between Watchorn and Smith at the moment. I'm actually looking. It's a bigger gap from Wildman to, yes, Smith. That's about 1.16. Yeah. So they are pulling. And I'm kind of cutting through the field here, keeping an eye on the battle tracker and all the other things. And they're basically running single file in their own little grooves. And there's like one of the few battles we see between the 61 and the 3. And that is currently for a sixth position, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yes, it is. Doug Bates, Betts, and James Thompson fighting hard. As Thompson's already up five spots. That number is 61 teal machine there. Battle but the thing on back. Uh, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I saw Buwada went from the wall to the inside lane, made it three wide with Cali Bajan and Kyle Dersham. 
And Buada trying to make his way forward. He lost the position early on in that opening melee, trying to avoid the calamities on lap one. Back up to 17th, he was down in 20th, as you see Bajan. And you're gonna start seeing this a lot, I think. You're gonna see drivers start kind of searching for lanes, trying to figure out what lane they wanna run, when, and, and how that's gonna develop in this race. Because a lot of drivers, it was just run the bottom, run a few laps, and then reset and try it again. You can't really do that anymore. You got to figure it out long term. Yeah, you got to kind of charge up your runs and really make it work here because if you don't get the momentum and make it work. You're just going to end up making a mistake and just kind of sliding down here. And it looks like just kind of cutting through the field. See, just in the back there in that third pack there, a big old battle there. If I think I want to say that's 11th. Uh, I think that's Chris Phillips. It's just a lip. Chris Phillips and battle for 10th between Powell and Chris Phillips. Yeah, just seeing that separation. This is a new one. So Chris Phillips actually just joined Summit Esports. He is the third driver for that team that's right now sitting first and third. Um, obviously, we were kind of introduced to him at Atlanta. As oh! Wow! Pow just got tagged, and, and that's, that's going to be a caution. A couple more. Yep. That's Ledger in it, and everyone's going to try to go down to the apron and avoid making that situation worse. But Chris Phillips tags Chris Howell. And it affects Dennis Crosby also and John Ledger, the 22 and the 25, also involved in that melee. Yep. Well, that's a good introduction piece to that drive right there in question. <laughs> like, probably not the introduction he wants, but he'll get a little bit of screen time regardless of that machine. Yeah, because we, so he, he missed Daytona and he showed up at Atlanta and he's been here ever since. And he is a phenomenal driver. Obviously, not really anything i don't think that was chris house fault i don't think i'll have to kind of well we'll look at the replay yeah, here we'll and kind of see what happened um but that was a that was a quick accident there yeah it just looked like the hole closed and he wanted to go for it so we'll take a look here and right there on the shot it looks like he came down uh chris owl but we'll take a look here we'll see if we can find a good old there's the chopper cam We'll kind of take it slow here again. Chris Howell's leading this line, the 88, and then Chris Phillip in the 6 is going to try to go down to the bottom here. Howell's coming down. The door's not completely shut. It looks it like he's holding his line, and yeah. It does look like Howell comes a bit more down, because you can see right there the 6 is on yeah. the apron. So the hole wasn't there, but at the same time, the six, he almost held it, and the six was closing. I I don't want to, and then you can see the 22 kind of gets ran over there with nowhere That's to go. That's a racing incident, 100%, mm -hmm. because they're both going for the same real estate. And in the middle of the corner, it's it, everything kind of happens at different rates. Because Hal, Hal's trying to kind of lay apex it a little bit. He's, he's using more of the turn two apex, whereas Phillips is just on that white line, and they just meet at the same point. I 100% that I think that's a racing incident, but it's just unfortunate that that's kind of how it just takes place. Yeah. I guess we'll take another look here. That's kind of what we saw live. Yeah. But you see how quickly it piles up and how quickly everyone had to dodge down to the inside row. Patrick Hernandez, a really good job by him avoiding that one. I see RJ Buchanan got a little piece of it. His first race of the season, number 99 for, uh, in Canadian Tire, the Canadian driver. Very fitting for him, um, but a little bit of damage on that Toyota Supra. Interesting. We're looking at the replay there. Actually, we'll take one more look here first before we do a live debrief, and you can see another onboard shot of RJ Buchanan. Yeah, just could maybe got the brakes a little bit more, but with that pace, there's not much you can do. And it. We always say, like, just get on the brakes. It's a lot easier said than done when it's right in front oh, of you. Oh, you know, when you, yeah, when you're trying to stop a tank, you can say, oh, just hit the brakes. But when the <laughs> when you try to stop a tank going into a wall, like, go oh, at 160, it's not usually ideal. So pit stops have happened for a lot of the, of the field at this point, um, except for oh, the right. front two. Mm -hmm. Lilac Zier and then 89 leads the way here, laps being led for the 89. And then John Holiday in the 38, sitting in second place. Harley Barletta, who was involved in the lap one crash, sits third. And then you have Weileman, Daffin, Watchhorn, Slagle, Smith, Buwata, and Thompson. Your top ten. Yeah. Oh, there goes an update. Weird update took for SDK there. Yep, it's 
just an odd break of strategy here. Xylic and Holiday trying to go long in the tooth here, maybe hope for another quick caution and try to stretch it a little bit longer while the rest of the field kind of want those fresh tires and fuel up here and try different strategies. So you like to see a mixed bag of strategies here and we'll see how it plays out in the long run for a majority of these drivers. Obviously under caution for the second time tonight for an incident involving Chris Hell, Chris Phillips, John Ledger, and Dennis Crosby, and a couple others, including RJ Buchanan. It's left Lilac Zier and John Holiday in the front of the field. Then obviously Harley Barletta, Brady Wallowin will make up row number two on this restart. Daffin Washhorn, row three. Slagle Smith, row four. Bawada and Thompson, row five in this 24 car field. Looks like, looks like we have one car out of this race and it's Jacob Elkins in the nine with a technical yep. failure. Only three laps completed for him and he is gonna be kicking himself, obviously the tactical failure, but there's always more races left on this calendar. Plenty of season left, so he'll be definitely back here next week to try again. Again, coming to our second restart of the night. Gonna be an interesting one. Obviously, a lot of the field on fresher tires. How much does this 13 laps matter? We're gonna find out. The old tires survived the initial restart. We're going to find out as pace car pulls off. They're in the restart box. And green flag in the air. You can already see. Holiday got a big yeah. amount of wheel spin. Wow. That's going to stack up that outside line quite deep, including hurting the current uh, previous race leader, the 51, a Wildman, who's now going to try to hunt his way back for the field. And it looks like, obviously, Daff going to be the big winner on that inside as he's charging towards the front, getting around that 81 of Barletta. Everyone fanning through as we approach turn three. Barletta just got dispatched to the high line and backwards he went, just like Wilowin did at the start. But zero lead, a lap under green. Holds off right now, but for how long? Ooh, just bobbled a little bit there. They're going to go three. Thought really hard about it. Still thinking hard about it. Wildman will move to the inside. Not Wildman, that's Watchhorn. Wildman's on the outside still. And Wildman's going to move to the inside lane here. And oh, Zier will make way. Mm -hmm. Three wide doesn't usually work, but Zier is kind of just a moving chicane here. She's, she is trying to hold on and make it work, but those old tires are screaming for relief, and the fresh rubber is just going to make quick work of it. These top three are all of Daffin, Wark, Watchhorn, and Wildman all get around. Lilac Zier and now Zier and Holiday are fourth and fifth, which is still a net improvement for both drivers yeah, absolutely. from where they started. We also think Zier just has pace here. Zier qualified fifth. Mm -hmm. And she was top five before the caution came out. So like that's not a huge surprise there as Kyle Smith tries to work on John Holiday. A little bit further back here. Kyle Smith on one of those that also put on fresh tires. And then the 61 of James Thompson trying to work his way through. We'll see them kind of work around Holiday and Sear. Smith gets around Zier. Thompson gets around Holiday. Mm-hmm. Over for the back, it's the seven and the six battling. Dyer in the seven, Phillips in the six. And that's ninth and tenth place right there. And then John Bawada, look at him moving his way back forward. Yeah, having a good run that five. 
You can see as well, just a B further back there. I think that's the yellow car there in question. Barletta, yeah. Barletta, yep. Something I'm kind of keeping an eye on, that, 90, that 19 of, of Hernandez running a lot higher up the track here than what we were expecting. That Ray Brig Toyota Supra, one of the Walk Journey Motorsports cars, three of them still in this field. Hernandez sitting in 15th, Gamillion 17th, and obviously team leader Watchorn in the race lead. But Hernandez running a lot higher up. That was a car in the wall that tagged the wall. I believe Gamillion was the one that tagged it. Mm hmm. But Hernandez running a really interesting line early on here. We'll see if it pays off for him. Obviously, right now sitting in 15th, has to try something a little bit different to make up ground. Yeah, you got to do that. Try changing different lines, running different angles, just trying whatever you can to get a push here and just make something happen. Front of the field, it's Watchhorn, Daffin, and Weileman. And one thing I kind of noticed there as we switch to this battle for the race lead, at end morning two, Weileman clipped the apron almost intentionally, trying to get that car to pivot a little bit, trying to get it to turn in. Obviously, third car in line, a lot more difficult dealing with dirty air. But Weileman trying to work out a solution to try to make that car rotate a little bit more. Mm hmm. That's a good, a good tip you can try to do is break just a little bit early to try into a corner to try to get it. Some drivers like to go deep and just kind of run off. It's It comes down to different strategies, but when you're in traffic and when you have to try to chase down the car ahead of you, sometimes you got to try different things to make it work. Battle at the fringe of the top 10, beginning to heat up a little bit more as Holiday falls backwards a little bit more. Dyer's gotten around Holiday in the 38. Chris Phillips in the 6, trying to get around now, and then Slagle, who is now in the 10th spot. Trying to capitalize. I'm just trying to find the hole and just try to make it work here. And we don't want to repeat a second caution where one car kind of got in a racing incident. So it's being cautious, but also knowing how to push inward. A lot of cars in this mess here. Phillips 8th, Holiday 9th, Betts 10th, and Slagle and Dersham, which were side by side there. 93 at Dersham were right on board with them. Doing a phenomenal job so far, working his way forward. Started in 22nd, up to 12th at the moment. Up 10 spots. Mm hmm. He's climbing. He's got a rocket strapped to that back of that number 93 machine. Oh, see, so you got Kyle Dersham here. You got Doug Betts in the three. Also, a turn three esports driver. So, a couple teammates here. And then, uh, obviously, Kyle Smith, fourth place for that team at the moment. A look back from Betts towards his teammate in Dersham, who are now in the top 10. It's eating up for second. Battle for second is Brady Wildman got around Alex Daffin. He's now setting his sights up for the lead here. As you can also see, just in the distance there as well, the fourth car in line, Kyle Smith. He is slowly reeling in this pack as well. Yeah. They're fighting a little bit hard. And it's allowing that number, that green and black 55, to kind of just slowly reel his way back into this battle and have some fun. Kyle Smith's been impressive. He's top three in points, I believe. I have to, double, I have to fact check that, but I believe he's top three in points. He's done a phenomenal job so far this season, just being consistent and being being persistent in that. Obviously, being in this range with Watcher New Motorsports and with uh, with some of these sports that's taken second and third, really good run so far. He's gotten to him. He's officially in that pack. Yep, he's in that that draft range. Now, other places like uh, Super Speedways and plate races, that's a good thing. Here, though, it's a bit of a blessing and a bit of a curse. The blessing is it allows not, not allow them to run away from you. But the downside is now you got that dirty air, and it's easy to catch someone, but it's another another battle to try to pass. And as you can see, he's kind of running a similar line to Daffin, so he's going to have to try to change up his line just a little bit to try to keep that run up because now he's going to feel the ill effects of dirty air. Running a little bit lower than Daffin was entering the corner. 
I think Kyle Smith's doing a really good job right now of just not adjusting. Uh, he he is stoic in the fact that he's kind of... He, we use this saying a lot, especially for those that are old like me. I feel like I'm a million years old now. Um, don't lose what brought you to the dance. Right? Yeah. That's what Kyle Smith's at right now. James Thompson obviously overdriving a little bit there in fifth place, the 61 machine in the top five. But Kyle Smith, he got to the back of Daffin, and he's not pushing to get around him. He's letting it kind of just come to him. That is so important at a track like Las Vegas, and it was important at, uh, at Atlanta. Don't lose what got you the dance. Kyle Smith uh, very much uh, remembering that. Uh, and it's, it's worked so far. He's, he's the fastest car of the leaders right now. Uh, level with the leader and faster than the two guards in front of him. Yeah, so he's got that pace. And seeing again, the leader's getting away from him. He has to try something. But like I said, burn up yourself too quick or do some drastic changes and instantly could throw him back out of contention here. So it's kind of a risk-reward situation. So we'll see what he can do. But it looks like he's manning it well as he's going to get to that inside line here as Daffin's not going to be able to close it off. And now he will, though, just get a little bit short. So he had the run, but the hole closed up quite quick. And can't even really finish the pass the 51. Just shows the ill effect that third air. He had the run. The hole closed. 48 blocked it and allowed the 51 to get the run off. So it's kind of hard because that he's basically got to try to pick a line and hope a hole opens because he's not in really the attacking position being third car in a pack here. He's not really in a tight position, but he's also, he's mostly just kind of being a vulture here. Can just kind of pick off things as they come. And obviously, he tried to make a pass on Wileman there. It, it's so difficult because you need the momentum of being able to kind of get in and get clear. And he couldn't get clear because there's two cars to that outside. And obviously, Daffin, he never really got to. Um, that makes it very difficult here. Obviously, these cars are very momentum-based. Being able to hold momentum and maintain that, uh, especially throughout a run as tires begin to age. And you see how much it's affected Kyle Smith. Now it's taking him a little bit to kind of regain that again. Mm -hmm. Right now, I was seeing, we're seeing a certain close back in once more. Leaders open up a 1.1 second gap. That is Merrick Watchor in front of the field. 19 career wins in this series. Looking for number 20 tonight. That is his goal he obviously talked to him earlier today he said last season he won 11 races he'd love to do that cool. again right now he's got four <laughs> and we are yeah. in race eight he's won over 50 percent of the races we've done so far this season and those are odds that he quite particularly enjoys in a 36 race season a little bit further back i'm keeping an eye on because we got that battle there for a second but i think you've almost just cut to it right there i'm keeping an eye on a, a little bit of a bad a battle of the pack here from 13th on back there's a bit of a train forming up behind that 38 and they're getting a little bit racy that there's a little cut to it right there and you can just see similar effects there as we saw earlier with the six and that pack they're just kind of keeping close here and kind of just running low on runs you can just see there that 95 getting a good run but no really to take it because they're kind of going high and low and he's just going to just try to split the gap. Patrick Hernandez has moved up to 11 spot. He's ahead of this in the number 19 machine using an outside lane. It's a lane that not a lot of cars are using at the moment. He's using it to perfection and he's getting himself close to that top 10 again. As someone that loves the high line, I would love to see it. Hat tip to him in question because that high line, just riding, if you can ride it right, ride it perfect. It's a fun watch to see and a fun sight to see. In the center of your screen right now, it's a battle for 13 or a battle for 12th between Slago Holiday and Jack Stanley. Stanley in a new look. Usually we see him in the, the Lightning McQueen, number 95. New look almost looks like it's a Dale Jr. inspired livery, I believe. Yeah, no, I, it kind of reminds you of that 01 the, the Pepsi, Daytona 5. The yeah, Pepsi the 400 Pepsi one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Barlett is still running here as well. Okay, just a reminder Zier Holiday have not pit yet in this race. We're on lap 40. Or let a pit on lap two. So, and obviously, again, we're on lap 40. So they're on the, the by, by far, the oldest tires in the field. And they haven't fallen as far as we thought they might at this point. Yeah, especially considering the opening wheel spin we saw in question on the outside line. It, you thought that, oh, uh, John Holliday, you thought it was going to be a situation where that car was basically doomed up the start. But yeah. it's been a slow march to the back here. 
And it, it raises some question here. Obviously, if we get to a, a late race green, a uh, race rate, a late race restart in question, it, it may be something to keep an eye on here because you may not get the spin off. But knowing you go this long, it could be worth at least exploring a two tire pit stop if push comes to shove late. Lap times at the moment as they run. Watchhorn currently the fastest on track. 32.24 for Watchhorn. Daffin, 32.3. Then everyone else right now, 32.4s for the most part. Matt Dyer actually ran a 32.3. So Matt Dyer trying to close in on this battle for what was, what is third place at the moment. Matt Dyer trying to join that battle. Mm-hmm. Let's try to reel it in there. Gap is closing per se, but it's still a pretty far, a pretty Herculean task is gonna have to get in that number seven to reel it in. But you can just see he's still that battle for 13th. They are fighting hard for every point because every point kind of matters. And John Holiday's falling back into the clutches of this. You can just see the yellow and black 81 machine of Harley Beretta there. He's gonna try to take the inside. And it looks like Maurice, Maurice is gonna try to capitalize as well in that 44 and just maybe take yeah. the middle to low lane as well. Yeah, good million in the 44. So I'm tagged the wall a little bit earlier in this race. Obviously, no serious ill effects here as they almost go three wide. But a lot of battling going on is it looks like Bajan and Jernigan battling. And they are battling hard. They were going up and down across the back straightaway. And that's in front of John Ledger and Chris Howe. So obviously, they've not really recovered that well from the second caution of this race on lap 13. Mm hmm. Chris Howell there in 20th place, not a place where he wants to be. Obviously, he's used to being up in the top five at races like this. And it's a far cry from where he wants to be right at the moment. Sitting down in the 20th position. John Bawada, 21st. RJ Buchanan, his first race of the season, he's sitting 22nd. Only one car off the lead lap, and that is Dennis Crosby. As we look at the race leader here, Merrick Watchorn. Yep. And that's the gap he's built. 2.23 seconds. Out of a third. Weileman, Smith. Ooh, Smith gonna run yeah. up the road just a little bit there. That's not gonna be too thrilled. Brady Weilman. You don't want to get used up like that. There's no contact, but you know that 51's gonna keep in the back of his mind if an opportunity comes later. Yeah, Kyle Smith, this is one of the things that Kyle Smith's kind of waiting for that moment of being able to sort of just pick off Weilman little by little. He couldn't do it while Weilman still had a, 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 a really a toe link to Alec Daffin's draft. That's not the case anymore. And now Alex Smith can try to set sail and, and try to chase down that 48. Mm-hmm. Saving tires. That's where a good clutchness comes into this. But also the great saying, eight tires are better than four. Yeah. Kyle Smith now up to P3, looking for his first podium finish of his career here in the Twiggy Everything Series. He was close, fourth last year, uh, fourth earlier this year in Daytona, but looking for that first piece of hardware in this season. And a good particular point now. Now he's going to chase down Alec Daffin. And that is 1.1 seconds he has to chase down now. And Hopefully, without going through pressure from Weileman again, because Weileman gonna gonna try to fight to get that double podium again. We got another good battle heating up here as well between James Thompson and Doug Betts here, battle for sixth yeah. respectively. As you can just see that three car keeping that high line running it right here, and he's been slowly wrapping in, wrapping it in. But that three has changed his lines. He's went high line. Now he's kind of gonna go a little bit on the lower side here. So that three is trying to find a lane to make that car work to get a good runoff to set himself up for something here. And similar to last time, he gets a good runoff of four here, going to get the draft to set himself into one. And it just seems like he just can't really set himself up nicely off the corner. He's got to back it down. 61 gets the position, but it looks like a switchback is in the cards here for the three. And now he's going to be in the more preferable position going to the next corner. Now he has the inside. Looking right now, you got Doug Betts just moving ahead of Thompson. Thompson had been falling back a little bit as this run has sort of progressed. We're on lap 50 of Which, 133. Speaking of that, we do got pit stops with Lyle Xier and John Holiday. They finally have elected to pit here on lap 50. 
and make their uh, first pit stops of the race. Yeah, it's like zero in pit lane. Finally making that pit stop. So we know that about how far they're going to go here. So we know that most of it's going to come in about lap 60, lap 64. Yeah, there's Merrick Blockhorn, the race leader at the moment. Keep an eye on this battle. Battle for the ninth spot. Hernandez and Dersham. The 19 of Hernandez, the 93 of Dersham. As both of them try to climb forward. Looks like it's time for the pit window here. I just realized that my mic's muted. Huh. Yeah, I was kind of wondering that too as well. I, I thought we were in the middle. I stepped out for a quick second and came back. I thought we were in the middle of a crank it up. Um, yeah, we're in the middle of a pit stop window here. Yeah. So a lot of drivers are electing the pit here. Yeah, pit window started early. Um, obviously, we saw we saw John Ledger exit pit lane. He's two laps down. Obviously, um, the 99 of RJ Buchanan's the last car running two laps down as well. Bajan just went two laps down on her pit stop. Looking at the race leader, this is Merrick Watchorn. You see the track map here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway on the right side of your screen. Betts and Jernigan down pit lane. One of the first ones in the top 10 to pit was Patrick Hernandez in the 19. So we'll see if that undercut helps him at all. As I believe he only went one lap down. That is correct. He only went one lap down. Mm -hmm. um, he's behind Zier, but he was behind Zier before Zier pit anyway, so that works out. Speaking of, the leader going to be pulling in, I think, this time by. So I heard the radio call yeah. correct here. There you go. And he will be. We'll see we'll if, if uh, Daffy comes in. He does Miles not. Fall in. Smith does come in yep. and overcooks it a little bit. Oh, that's back speedy in a little. Yeah. That's got to be. We'll see. But he had to woe that thing down. Yep, Daffy going to come in this time by. So why the lead a lap? Mm hmm. 
Lalex here. Technically the first car off the lead lap at the moment. Zero on fresh tires. Obviously pit on lap 50. Mm -hmm. So those tires up the scuff here as Daffin comes down pit lane. Matt Dyer, your new race leader. Number seven leads the way. Ooh, surprisingly, it was not a speeding pedal for Kyle Smith. He is away, so... That's amazing. Yeah. That is phenomenal. Yeah. That is as on the ragged edge as you can get. Because that thing I was tank slapping. I mean, he's thankfully didn't speed. He's also thankfully didn't end up hitting the inside of the pit wall. So, overall, yeah. he'll count as a success, even though he may need a new fire suit under next pit stops. Dyer comes in, got his lap leg, got a bonus oh. point for it. I almost thought Dyer was going to overshoot for just half a second there. Yeah, it looked like that transition got him a little bit loose there. Slagle's going to stay out. So Slagle will inherit the race lead here. Another race leader for uh, Brad Slagle, Jack Stanley in that 95. He will also stay out as well. Mm -hmm. Only two cars that have stayed out at this point in time. And it's going to make a very interesting top five once everything cycles out because it's going to be Watcorn, Daffin, then Smith, and Zier. Mm -hmm. Zier moves out of while in there. But it's not by much, and that's the gap. That's what that looks like. The battle for the what will provisionally end up being fourth place. Currently, right now, it's about for seven. But Weilerman on fresh retires just by a few laps. Slagle and Stanley both come in. That's going to give the lead back to Merrick. Merrick in 91. Yeah. Once it all shapes out. And it's not even close. 5.5 .5 between Daffin and Watchhorn. Smith actually a lot closer to Daffin. We wondered what that undercut was going to look like. And it wasn't much of an undercut for Smith. Well, on one lap undercut for Smith, but it closed the gap up to less than four tenths. So that's the battle for second place at the moment. 5.4 behind the race leader. While I'm in a further three quarters of a second back as he dispatched of Zier. And then Harley Barletta in the sixth position, Matt Dyer in seventh, John Holiday in eighth, as he battles with Patrick Hernandez. Yeah, good battle, fake it, uh, mm -hmm. shape it up between the two of them there and Holiday and Hernandez. Both in the top 10, this is a battle for eighth place. And Doug Betts just behind in 10th. Yep, about a second back. And after that's about a five second gap between yep. Phillips and Betts, so. Top 10 all relatively close. Well, I would say top nine is, again, Merrick's in a bit of a different postcode at the moment. Battle for 16th. We're looking at it. It's Bajan in 16th. We're looking center of your screen, Chris Howell. And then Brad Slagle. One of the closer battles going on at the moment, as well as this battle between Holiday, Hernandez, and Betts. The more that these two are side by side, the more that Doug Betts in the three gets to close in. And everyone's running a little bit different line to each other here. Hernandez sticking to what got him to the dance. Don't lose it. Right now, it worked out really well for him in that first run. We'll see how much further he can go. But Betts will make a try to will try to make a move to make a two for one on this lap to go up to the eighth spot, and he will with ease. Mm -hmm. Nice, quick, easy. You love to see it out of that three. You don't see it very often, but when you do, it's phenomenal special race leader Merrick Watchorn he's put RJ Buchanan RJ Buchanan still firmly one lap down but the first car one lap down 19th 20th 19th to 23rd all one lap down that's Buchanan Jernigan Stanley Buwalda and Crosby all one lap down no penalties from that first round of pit stops yeah especially considering some of the jars were coming yeah. in very woed down doesn't shock. It, it kind of shocks me a little bit, just because. Yeah. You, you we, we you saw wanna, how close it was. Mm-hmm. You want to hit the entry, and you want to hit the exit as quick as you can, and obviously to get as much time as possible. And sometimes on the Raiders' end, you sometimes make a mistake, but all drivers are able to make it through clean. Yeah, phenomenal effort so far. We've had two cautions. We had two cautions early on in this race. One on lap one, one on lap twelve. It's been green ever since, and we're at the halfway point of this race. This is the halfway lap. We're going to have one more pit stop, knowing that it's about a 50-something-odd window. We're going to have at least one more stop for the whole field to get to the end. 
Yeah. We're not really in the... Actually, well, we'd probably say the window question would be about... Uh, I would say the window opens about... I would say, 80? realistically, the window opens about lap 83. Yeah, I was going to say, 83, 50 to go. We saw Z, Z, Lila, Z, Z, Lila Zazir and Holiday both stretched to about 50 laps, and the rest came in about 10, 12 laps later. So it's safe to assume that, yeah, lap 80 onwards should be able to comfortably get you in. So coming in with about 12 to go. And the question really is, is if someone like uh, Alex Staffen, for instance, who's about a good distance away, about four seconds, or the rest of the pack, what do you do to try to cut into that gap there? You may have to try to take an aggressive undercut once the window opens, just hit it in. But the downside is, is that if you do that, A, it hurts you on the long run, and B, all it takes is Merrick, the leader, just saying, okay, I see you coming in, so I'm just going to come in next lap and try to counteract that. So, so I'm going to kind of intro, kind of put that in. So when the pit stop cycle through, Watch One had a 5.5 second gap. It's already shut. It's already shaved down to 3.7. True. Sure. So... But the issue is lap traffic, and yeah. Daffin's going to be battling with more than just lap traffic, because he's got to pay attention to the 55 in his mirror, too, who has not left him alone. No. So, Daffin, moving the outside, Daffin on the outside lane is a very interesting move here, because it's not the fastest lane. Obviously, he's going to get around Buchanan and, and Stanley pretty easily here. And Bawada realized that, hey, there's another car coming. Yeah. May not want to cause too much pain here. You can just see the 55 just kind of just hoping to find a lane. Just hoping those two white cars show some mercy and allow them well, around. Yeah, it's, that is sort of, that is the ragged edge of what you can possibly do. Because those two, the 95 and the 99, are still bad for position. Fight. Yeah, no, they have a right to fight. Because yeah. they're fighting for their own position and they're only going one down. So they have a right to fight, stay on the lead lap. So, or well, not stay on the lead lap, but just fight in general for their own positions. They don't have to lay over. Yeah. So That's battle you for the lucky dog. So. Yeah, so you're kind of saying, look, show me some mercy, but if it's basically if one driver doesn't show the mercy, the other one can't either. So, but luckily, the type will get around relatively unscathed, obviously, and that battle will continue. But now it's up to Brady Wildman, who's next car behind that two yeah. car pack, to try to uh, work his way around. Interestingly, Matt Dyer's also dispatched Zier. Zier's had a really rough go of it the last few laps. Already, obviously, when Pit Slap cycled through, she was in front of Wildman. She's already down to sixth and falling into the grasp of Barletta and Betts here in this battle for six. Barletta and Betts trying to move forward, as is Patrick Hernandez, who's gotten clear and away from the 61 of James Thompson. He's on no man's land at the moment, but that outside lane, so far, it's working for the 19. Oh, yeah. It's 100% working. Over for the back. You see this. Penalty four car battle. It's mostly between Thompson and Phillips. So you got Hernandez in ninth and Holiday in twelfth, also in range. That's a little bit of time as you can see on the track map. It's a bit of time before they they're not really in a lucky dog really fighting situation, just fighting for track position, but yeah. you never know what the longer the run threat could come closing in. Watchorn coming up on, I believe that's the 88 of Christopher Howell. Indeed, it is the 88 of Christopher Howell. Mm -hmm. It keeps going wrong. For uh, uh, Zylak in the number 89 is yeah. now, she's going to be under pressure from both the three of Doug Bates and the 81 of Harley Beretta. She's trying to fight for as hard as she can to keep that position, but... It's just tire disadvantage right now. Those tires are about... Oh, we got a yellow. Now it's going to be for Jack Stanley crashing. And it's bound to be the first car on the... The first car lap down. And you see damage at the rear of that car. The number 95 of Jack Stanley. I'll have to take a look at the replay. Wonder. It looks like it's probably going to be a single car because I don't see anything else, any contact worth noting. So I'm going to guess it was a single spin, but we'll have to wait and see. So it looks like he's behind Kyle Smith here. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's... Huh. So Jack Stanley was kind of just an innocent bystander there between the 55 and the 40 stuff of Joshua Jennings, Joshua Jernigan and the 55 of Kyle uh, Stanley. 
Well, Kyle Smith, yeah. Kyle Smith. <laughs> yeah, we'll kind of take a look yeah. at it here. And obviously, we'll kind of we'll zoom out a little bit. We'll see if we can get the uh, get old chopper cam out. Oh, good old chopper cam. Yeah, this is interesting. Because Kyle Ooh. Smith, we'll kind of back up a little bit here. Kyle Smith's following Jernigan. Jernigan, is, Jernigan at this point was... He was... Jernigan for looks like he something. was 18th, 18th or 19th. That's so, what I'm getting from. Yeah, so he was not for position. He was more battling for position with uh, Stanley in this regard. And it kind of looked like maybe a bit of net code, but at the same point, the 55 almost ran to the back of Jernigan. So... Very odd. And then, like I said, just Jack Stanley tried to clear it and got hooked, and that was yeah. all she wrote for the uh, car Jack uh, Stanley over there. Now, luckily, he still got a fast pair in the, in the pocket, or at the very least, was enough, not enough damage that put him behind the wall, so he will soldier on. And the thing that kind of really hurts about this, we're just really outside the window here. Uh -huh. So... If you pit now, you're going to have to save at least a little bit. If you stay out, you're guessing that you're going to see one more at least round of pit stops. We see a lot of the field coming in, as you can just see on that mini-map. Really, just a question, who didn't come in the pit? And I think most of the field did, so everyone's really on the same strategy here. Because obviously the alternative is staying out, not pitting, and... Then just being in an odd spot doesn't really make much sense, per se, unless you get a quick caution. But I do wonder if maybe a few cars in the back may take a chance here. We see RJ Buchanan, John, Bado, uh, John Buada, Dennis Crosby, and 36 all coming in to top off. Just get himself a little bit closer, maybe give him just a little extra fuel economy, and hopefully, if it stays green in the end, they can actually ride it out here. Interestingly enough, Josh Jernigan, who was involved in that caution, did not come down pit lane. Huh. So he's going to try to use the wave around here to get back on the lead lap and let things play out on a strategy standpoint. It's an interesting call. I don't hate it. We, I don't hate it either, considering that he pitted around in the mid-60s. He's good to go with about 110. And sometimes cautions, precautions, especially with antency and new tires. Some drivers may be over-aggressive. We get the wave round and then come back in and come back around and pit again. So it's not a bad call. Uh, see, 23 cars still running. Jack Stanley uses fast repair, so he's back and good to go. Albeit very tail end of the field, two laps down. But we'll see how it plays out. Merrick Watchorn leads the way for Alec Daffin, Brady Wildman, and Kyle Smith, who also didn't lose anything in that transaction other than losing third to Weileman. Yeah. The one positive is it does, it kind of negates Merrick, uh, Merrick Watchhorn's lead and that's yeah. going to allow Daffin, Weilman, Smith, Dyer, and even uh, uh, Zaire in the uh, 89 kind of new life and allow fresh tires, pit stop, and a chance to attack again. Especially good for the 89 who was sinking like a stone. Jernigan gets that wave around. He'll rejoin the tail of the field. And we'll get ready for our third restart of the night. At a cautionless race, which you love to see, but oh, she maybe shouldn't speak too soon. So basically, we're going to take the hard right here. It's going to be on the 91's control. The restart box. 
And away they fly. And it's a good restart for the 91 as the 48 is going to be under pressure from the 51 of Brady Wildman. Pretty clean restart. Oh, there's a spin in the back there. Baltimore car is involved. Easily RJ McCann and Jack Stanley involved. Christopher Howell. Kyle and just Durst one a minute. Car, yep. Just one car spun in that back, and it just similar to what we saw on caution number two, just nowhere to go for a handful of drivers. So we'll take a look here, and you're just gonna see it. Oh, All three wide that situation there, Dersham and uh it was a three-wide situation there between Holiday, Bajan, and Dersham. And obviously, we'll kind of we'll have to move a little forward here. We'll see if we can kind of cherry-pick the right driver here. But yeah, three-wide situation because it's three-wide in two rows. Obviously, coming to this restart. Yeah, it looks like the 39. And a lot, it, it starts off with wheel spin from the 61, backs everything up. Mm-hmm. And, and you just see that wheel spin caused the 39 to fall back, make it three wide, and then... Beijing looks picks up a little bit as Dersham drifts down. Mm -hmm. And it, initially, everything's fine, but Dersham has to chase it up the racetrack. Tags a 38. It's, it's one of those things, if they weren't three wide, it probably would have ended out a little bit better, but just because they were three wide, it caused more problems, and then it just became a track blocker where the car is trying to avoid, and then you can see Jack Stanley hook... The blue car there sent him up the racing surface, and it's just nowhere to go for the rest of the field. But Wada just trying to get low and get, gets clipped too. So a lot of good cars in the back there, including Jack Stanley, who just had to burn a faster pair, is now looking at what do situation. Fourth caution of the night. Kind of free fields and freezes the top eight as it's uh, as it sat. It's Merrick Watchorn, Alec Daffin, Brady Wildman, Kyle Smith, Matt Dyer, Lilac Sear, Patrick Hernandez, Doug Betts, Chris Phillips, and Harley Bartoletta mm -hmm. in the top ten. Maurice Gamillion eleventh. John Ledger made out like a bandit up to twelfth. This thing is also going to allow some drivers the ability to save fuel, or if they want to top, come in and top That's off. That's the important thing there. Saving fuel. Saving, saving fuel, fuel big time. Because mm -hmm. now we're in the window. But obviously, if you're up front, you're not pitting the top off. But if you're in the back, you may try it. As we do see a couple drivers that actually are coming in. That is RJ Buchanan, obviously, maybe to fix up a little more of the damage, and Jack Stanley as well. Yeah, you see the damage on Buchanan's car. That that car is modified at the moment. Yeah. Looks like it should be driving down a short track in Tennessee, not Las Vegas. We'll be at a short track next week. We'll be in Martinsville. Sure. We'll be right at home. Kind of listen a little bit of the radio chatter here. A few drivers kind of hoping for maybe one more yell to firmly get themselves in the fuel range. So maybe a few, a few drivers still kind of questioning their fuel loads. Even with the ability to save here, they're still not looking good. They're not full throttle yet. So I'll have to wait and see it all plays out. It's a very interesting dichotomy. Like, this is one of the times where you're kind of wishing for another caution. Mm -hmm. And you don't hear drivers talk about that a lot. For multiple reasons, because if you say it on a hot mic and next thing you know you're involved in a caution, it looks bad. At the same point, cautions breed cautions and precautions breed chaos. On the content side of things, I love when I love when things immediately age like milk. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to caution. Not like that, though. It's one of the <laughs> most ironic things in the world that just it, you can't help but smile every single time as a driver because we've all been there. Yeah. I would love a caution. Ah, crap. You yeah, just hope it. you're not. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be in the caution, but you're hoping for one. Yeah. Be careful what you wish for. Racing genies are really, they're really cruel about it. You got you to gotta word it correctly. You got to <laughs> word the word, say it right. If you just say, I want a caution, the hey. racing genie will give you one, but you may be the caution. <laughs> I need someone to spin for me and not actually be me. Is what you need to say. You need to be very specific about it. It's like, you got to pull out the, you got to pull out the uh, voodoo doll and just like be ready. Like, all right, see this car? Again. That's the car you need. <laughs> pull out the voodoo doll, pull out the thesaurus, pull out everything. All right, how do I say this? How do I do this without being me? All right. <laughs> well, anyway, Hayes car going to pull off here. And, ooh, car taking a very low. That's a seven, a dire. But now Hayes car going to pull off here. Going to be on the 91's control going into the restart box here. And away we go. 91 gets a good jump. 48 going to have the inside push here on the 51. And just like most of the night... Those two are going to be side by side, headed in the one. Left for the back, you see Dyer and Smith fighting hard. And they're going to catch Jack Stanley here. Jack Stanley's going to try to pull it low here. There you see him getting passed on the inside. So a few cars taking that wave around, just trying to survive and didn't work out quite as well. Now the question is what now with this guy newfound life, what does the 48, the 951, maybe even the 7 have for the guy that's been dominating the field so far, the 91? Good question. This is your lease on life here. But Watchhorn has the advantage. It's weird because you like if you're the 51, you want to pass the 48 because you don't want to be sitting third. But if you start getting scrappy, you're gonna allow the 91 to drive yeah. away. So it's kind of a you have even it's it's hard for race driver race car drivers to have truces, but sometimes you have to put a truce in situation until you dispatch the bigger threat. I guess to use a real wrestling term, it's like a battle royal. Get the giant out first, and then we'll worry about each other. Oh, tag of the wall there in the back. Oh, Matthew Dyer running that high line. Yeah. He's trying to rip it. Actually, it might work for him a little bit here. It's actually going to work for him here. Oh, wow. Yeah, because no one's guarding that high line. He's got clean air and fresh tires to make a boot. That's make wild. He is on it. Look at that number seven on the outside. And Kyle Smith's like, I'll have some of that, please. <laughs> he saw it. Monkey see, monkey do. Oh, they're racking in the back. They've been trying for a couple laps. It's trouble. Josh Jernigan's in it. Yep. John Ledger looks like he's in it. He's in the grass. We're still green. Yep. Iris did not throw a caution there, so away we roll. But Jernigan just got rolling. Obviously, this group here is fine. Front of the field, Matt Dyer from fifth to second. A lot like Zier in this mix as well. And then, and then it's Chris Phillips, Doug Betts, and all of them are in range. I was taking a look back just to see what happened. Two cars were involved. You think Iris would have thrown it, but Iris and God's throw a break here. You'll just see 29. Ooh. It's a little bit of a tap there. And then nowhere for the 40 to go, Josh Jernigan. And then blinks out, causes another little stack up there in the back. Yeah, that was Bawa that got stacked up there with Crosby and Holiday and Bajan. Mm-hmm. Lead pack, still six cars. Dyer wants the race lead. This time, not for pit cycle. He's in a really good spot right now. Yeah, Dyer took an advantage, saw an opportunity at the high line and ripped to the front. But now got to try to pass the strongest car of the day. What you do, because you can't keep running that high line. It's a strong line, but you're going to burn your tires up a bit more than the car's ahead. So it's kind of a, a bit of a last resort kind of move. And then question B as well. 
we have to keep in mind is that some of these drivers may not be 100% on fuel yet. They have to maybe save at least a little bit, try to get to the end. So what are the lights on for some of these drivers and how comfortable they feel in those in those cars? But we'll see right now the 7 going to take the inside here. Either he's got the green light or he thinks we're getting another caution as he's taking his charge to the front. Oh, Daffin and 7 touch side by side. That's going to allow the 91 to skirt on away. Right there, that little incident is what the 91 wanted to see. It gives him some breathing room. And now here comes the 51 of Wildman. Going to charge on the inside. Oh, the Daff inside in the back ways as well. He'll save it. Big save by the 48. The 48 is really struggling right now to keep that car planted under him. Yeah, damage is beginning to have an issue on that 48 because he tagged the wall and he was... He was Kind of pancaked on both sides as Phillips gets around, tries to get around both, and will do so. Yeah, driver, we haven't said much of ever since that caution, uh, the first caution of the night. He has now got that six machine dialed in, and he will put himself up the fifth position. He's gained 13 starts since the start. Forty-eight though, gonna try to answer back, and you can even see Lig Zaire trying something, try to find a hole. Ooh, six gets a little checked up there. And another chart we have saying, where did he come from? The three of Doug Betts. He's ready to join this battle. Forty-eight defending like his life depends on it right now, just trying to make that car a little bit wide. Question: We'll cut back to the race lead here with Merrick. Just show you. Tart three, you can see that Brady Wildman and Kyle Smith, they are slowly reeling back in Merrick. So a bit of a four car break. We got one pack of four and then you got Dathan with a train of at least seven cars behind. So you can just see right there, it's basically rush hour on the I-5. Wow, that was Zier going uh, really sold Daffin a dummy, got, got the over under on him. Trying to get to that fifth spot. Zero's gonna do it. Davin fell for it pretty. That was a pretty interesting move there by Zero, but it worked out giving Zero the fifth spot. And you see the damage on Daffin's car. Mm-hmm. It's gonna act almost like an anchor for him here. Yeah, because you know that 48 is just trying to make that car wide. He was mirror driving it, it just kind of didn't pay out. I think the 48 may be pitting here if I heard the call right. And he yeah. is trying to, and he will successfully get it down. So that damage is just a little bit too much, or maybe he finally got the flag, and he'll be coming on in. Well, he's, we're also in the window, too. So if he knows he's not making it on fuel, then he knows he's safe. He can kind of just pit whenever. And yeah. why not cut your losses here and try to get that undercut and see if he can make up some time? It makes you wonder, though, because we know a couple drivers came in and topped off as John someone Biden up there. So it's watching. Oh, I think, oh, keep an eye on Brad Sigler. He's stuck right now on the wall on the inside. This won't draw a caution, thankfully. Nope. Something happened with him. And he is not happy. He's stuck. Here's what happened. 
Did he get tagged? Oh, 100% he got tagged by Harley Barletta. Oh. Harley sent him to the inside wall and just, oh, good old eye racing physics right there. Head to toe. Honestly, I think Daffin was kind of hoping that Dekashi did come out because he probably would have stayed on the lead lap and would have been good. Coming to 31 laps to go. Mm -hmm. Watchorn, Wileman, Smith, Dyer all pit on lap 76. You'd be looking at Kyle Dersham in the 93. He's sitting eighth place. He put on lap 81, mm -hmm. which would give him 52 laps to run. And we assume safe is about 50 because we know uh, two cars to stay at a holiday and the 83 Azilic both successfully made it 50 laps. So we know 50 is the window. So we know 83 is good. So it's going to be quite interesting to see how this plays out. But right now, I think Kyle Dershman is in the catbird seat because. He has to save only about maybe two laps of fuel while there's a big ask for the, the rest of the field to try to make it. But the only saving grace is we did have a caution that maybe extended the tanks one to two laps. But with Alex Staffen having to come in, which may have been possibly a fuel concern, also a damage concern, we don't 100% know what the rest has. But considering that top half still kind of running race pace per se, they have backed down at least a little bit in comparison to their best times, but obviously tire wear and off will come in, but it is showing us. We do see Dyer pitting. That's going to be the first one of those to blink. Obviously, you look at what we have here, the, the pit strategy, the pit lengths, 63 laps of what Doug Betts ran in the middle stanza of this race, went 63 laps, so it is possible to go longer than 50. Mm -hmm. Just how comfortable do you feel doing it? I can throw another point as well. It's good to have possibly a car teammates in the field or even a car ahead of you because you can use it for draft. Right now, the problem is with Merrick being the uh, the trendsetter, the pace setter, cleaning the track for the rest. He doesn't have that ability to use that draft to his advantage and maybe save at least a little bit of fuel that way. But again, looking at times, they all are at least backing him down at least a little bit. So they're trying to make it work. Yeah, just to confirm what was on the chat, how many cautions were in that round. Well, we got a caution now, so and that's gonna be for Harley Beretta. And Alec Daffin. Keep an eye on this. So this is insult to injury right here, and it's oh. in front of both of them. Oh. Oh, in the same wall. Same wall that the other driver got stuck in. Yeah, it was Slayo that got tagged into it. And it happened in front of Barletta. And it looks like it was. It would have been Jack Stanley, I think, or Chris Phillips. Yeah, it was Chris Phillips getting kind of. Oh, checked Chris up Phillips there. got checked up behind James Thompson. Mm -hmm. Troublemaker for the, the HTL race at Watkins Glen. And he finds a little bit of trouble again, that 61 machine. Checks up the field here, and you can just look at that impact. Yeah, just a big lick. Again, reminds me of Gordon 07 in that nicotine car. Just yeah. hard lick on the inside. And obviously, this kind of changes everything because everyone's going to kind of get bailed out here. Yep. The only driver that kind of got hurt by that is Dyer, who went a lap down because of the cycle and yeah, was he's... hoping it would cycle out. And yeah. now he's pinned. Let's see if we can find the 61 of Thompson because 61 is where it kind of all checks up here because he tags the wall. And he tags the wall hard. And obviously, you see what happens here. You see Barletta got, went all the way from the inside wall all the way back to the, uh, the inside lane on that turn three. Now, interestingly enough, Chris Phillips took fuel only here. Oh, that's an, he had a bit of fast repair though too, so
Yeah, and then here comes the six again. Yeah, Chris he Phillips comes back in, so it's going to be Wildman, Watchhorn, and Seer, top three. Listening to the radio chatter, he, I think he thought he put tires and checked them, but didn't check them, so I'll have to come back in to get those tires. But Brady Wildman can thank his pit stop, pit, thank his virtual pit crew to get himself in a good spot or 25 to go. Put him in the lead. So we got several cars here that I try to use wave around. John Ledger leads the wave around line. And then you have Matt Dyer, who's trying to get back on the lead lap. Right now he sits in 15th. And obviously you kind of look a little bit further behind him. Jack Stanley, I believe, so we're looking at third in line here. It is Jack Stanley, who's in 22nd. And then looking a little bit further on down the order, Brad Slagle right there in front of uh, Brady Weileman. So four cars trying to get wave around here to try to keep one of their laps back. Again, coming to 24 laps to go. Fuel concerns are now out the window. Every driver is comfortable to go to the end. So we're just going to see hard nose race into the finish. With everyone having fresh tires. It's going to go hard. It's going to be a spicy restart. Oh, yeah. Because you got Brady Wildman, pole sitter, trying to yeah. hold on here. And America, the face of the front row that qualified 1 2 are now 1 2 in the race. Yeah, you got Lewis Iyer, who used that strategy to get herself up and now is still up there and fresh tires on sequence. And then you even got Kyle Smith as well. So you got a lot of strong cars up here fighting. Yeah, yeah. Wildman and Watchhorn front row. That's how they started. Lilac Zier and Kyle Smith. Lilac started in fifth, so she's up two spots. Kyle Smith, where he started in fourth. Dersham up 17 spots from where he started. Didn't set a qualifying time. James Thompson sitting in sixth. See if he can recover from that damage that he received tagging the wall. Patrick Hernandez in seventh. And Doug Betts, Chris Howell, and Maurice Gamillion round out the top ten. It's about to get pretty intense at the front of the field for the fifth restart of the night. Coming to 23 laps to go. It's Wileman and Watchhorn leading the way. Green flag in the air and away we go. That's a great jump, but always a pretty good restart there. Always for the leader in that regard. It's going to allow uh, Merrick to be under pressure here, but he'll be able to get that car low and cut off the 89. See further back, three wide, fighting hard. Yeah, that's a lot further back. Mm -hmm. It's like Jernigan was the one that lost out there as he tried to make a move on Philip and uh, no, Chris Phillips and Chris Howell. And that is Cali Bajan, first car lap down on the outside lane, trying to stay first car lap down in case something happens. Oh, big move here, possibly for second. So Lil Xayer tried to play a dummy Merrick Watchhorn there. He's going to try to rip it around the outside. And she's going to do so. Whether or not she can get clear is a different story. But right now, she's got the momentum and the advantage. And the number 89 machine through three and four. Lilac Zier, can she chase down Brady Wileman? Wileman right now is smiling like a cat. They canary gives him some distance here, some time away. With how hungry they are, you know that that pack's coming. Brady Wildman the set the end. fast slap of the race at 30.63. Yeah, looking at the paces, the top three were Brady Wildman, the 89, Lilix Zaire with 30.77, and Patrick Hernandez with a 30.81. All, all drivers in the top eight broke the 30-second barrier. Battle for second place. Again, Zier and Wachorn battling for second as Wileman tries to waltz away.
and suddenly beginning to kind of come back into its own for Watchhorn. Mm hmm. Watchhorn can't use all of that, all of the lane that he wants. Goes down, uses the apron, which you're allowed to do as long as it's not a plate track. And Watchhorn gets clear. He's got 19 laps to close up, a second. I got a truce may be in order to try to reel down Brady Wildman, but... Oh, there's no way. There's no way. That's the thing. That's the thing. You, a truce would be beneficial to both parties, but both parties want second position, so... There's nothing you can really do. At the end of the day, race car drivers are selfish in every sense yeah. of the word. Which I don't blame them for being. That's not an insult. That's just saying. Sometimes it's better to work together, but selfishness sometimes prevails. Yeah, they're trying to chase the leader back down. The Watchhorn is pulling away from Zir and pulling closer to Wylam, and we're going to see a bit of a slugfest here at the end of this race if they keep going like this. Mm -hmm. A little bit further back, we're getting a slugfest too between the 61 of Thompson and the Fets as well. They're side by side all the way through three and four, and they're going to be side by side going through one and two. Yeah, Thompson trying not to fall backwards anymore. Just can't close that door. The three's going to get the run off the corner. The 36 of John Holiday is also there just in case something happens. Yeah, you got 36 of Bajan, 38 of Holiday. Bajan again, first car lap down. So her motivation is. Her motivation just to try to stay out of trouble and, and hope that trouble happens and gives her a chance to get back on the lead lap because she's got the pace to be in the top 10. This would be the battle for 10th. Mm -hmm. I see Chris Phillips is in that now. Yep. Just all that her last call. She's trying to fight back through the field here. Battle for fifth. Patrick Hernandez and Kyle Dersham. And you got... Doug Betts in seventh. James Thompson's down in the eighth position now, well and truly. Battle up front. Wileman's closed down within uh, almost down to six tenths right here. Yeah, he is closed. I'm keeping an eye on his timing and scoring. Best that time I know Brady was faster by a tenth. Yeah. Oh, actually, they were actually equal. My bad. They both did the 31.20. This time by, we'll see what they do at the line. 31.32 for Brady Wildman. 31.20 for Merrick Watchhorn. So Watchhorn was faster. Yeah. And third place, Luke Zaire, was a 31.44. So running similar times right now. Fastest car in that pack is that number 91. Yeah, Watchhorn doing a phenomenal job so far. Closing that gap down, closing it down to half a second. We'll pull up the battle box. Good old battle box. That time by, Merrick was faster again. By almost the 10th. Mm hmm. Well, Zier was faster than that. Zier 31.3, so Zier's got some pace still. Both the, All three of them within a second of each other. Yep, they're leaving Kyle Smith in the dust. So this is going to, unless caution comes out, this is going to be a three horse race. You know the moment the watch went a while and begin battling, Zier's in it. Yeah. She's going to be ready to pick up the pieces yeah. and strike like a viper. That time by fast as the three was Watchhorn. Wild was the slowest of the three. Yeah, past two laps in a row. Yeah, and this is the, the this is the battle box for the top seven. Really, the top three is the main focus here in this battle box. But you also see how close it is with Kyle Smith, Patrick Hernandez, Kyle Dershman, Doug Betts. All of them still in it as well. Coming 11 to go. Here it it's is. Me. He's coming. Here it is. How aggressive will it be with the pass with an opening on the inside? Ooh. Looks like he's going to try to take the hole. He, he plugged the hole. He kept Wileman was smart enough to give him a little bit of space. Didn't want to draw contact, but Wileman now well and truly side by side going to 10 to go. I have to try to aggressive side draft here to keep the position. You can see the 91 going to come up here, try to run out the road. 
Slow down the 51. 51's going to lead the lap. He kind of wishes it was a 123 right. lap race instead of a 133 yeah. lap race. Watch one looking for career win number 20. Wileman looking for career win number one. Wileman gets tight. Just in case, I think Zai, uh, Zaire is looking for a first win as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, yep Zaire, she's a rookie in the series. Mm -hmm. Zaire 100% looking for it, and she's within six tenths. If something happens and they get squirrely, she is in it. And we get to see her race tomorrow night on Bristol Dirt. Mm -hmm. And this is what it, this is what we're talking about. Wileman goes up high, tries to block Washer, and goes to the bottom. Nine laps to go. They're still side by side, oh. and they will make contact there. If they if they didn't touch, you could put a paper clip between the two of them. <laughs> Holy cow, this is the battle for the race lead. Summit Esports versus Watch 20 Motorsports. And then Zia, the to... privateer, mm -hmm. trying to make something happen. Watch one will lead this lap. First time he's led a lap since well over the, under the 100 lap mark. Yeah. Still battling. Watch one, not clear. Not Should clear. He can't clear himself. Oh, so close. I thought Very he was going to get off too. And Zaire's there. Yeah, Zaire's right there. Zaire's present, front and center. Wileman got cleared. Can he do anything about it? Can he try to build momentum coming to seven laps to go? Three yeah, cars in a bubble for this race win. I don't think that's what Lilik wanted to see right there. They wanted to keep fighting. All Open they're going the to, Zaire's, this is not, this is. It's not over yet, no, when, you're 100% when, when, right. When, you're, when your floor is third, you're in a really good spot. But you're looking at that ceiling right now, and it is in reach. Wileman yep. trying to make something happen, but I think he's burned his stuff up trying to battle with Watchorn. Mm -hmm. And he spent too much time on that outside lane. The issue is, can Zier pick him off with six laps to go for second place? Yeah, she's going to have to do it quick here. Yeah. Watchorn's starting to pull away a little bit. That time by, asses out of the three. Yeah, watch one 32.04, Zero 32.17, Vileman 32.24. So Zier's got the pace to make it happen. Mm -hmm. But can she come into five laps to go? This is again the battle for the race lead. We'll kind of pivot from here for a second, kind of show you what it's looking like fourth on down with Hernandez, Dersham, Smith, and Betts all within a second of each other. As you're looking for further down, James Thompson in range of Chris Phillips. But it looks like he may settle for that eighth spot with Bajan having set up a 16th one lap down as she tries to work around and try to make her way through the field. Four laps to go is what we're going to see at the line for Merrick Watchorn on the cusp of 20 career race wins. Yep, Zaire has to send one now if she wants any chance of catching, but... Looks like the driver, at the very least right now, we'll see how it finishes out, but it looks right now, 20's more on the cards than seeing the drivers in second and third get their first. Yeah, Watchorn's pulled half a second on Wileman. Zier needs to make something happen, needs to try to be a little bit more aggressive here to try to make that second place reality. She has the pace for it. She just needs to kind of let it kind of get out of her comfort zone a little bit. Mm -hmm. They have to try a different line. Like that. Is she going to get to the bottom? Wileman thought about blocking. Zier. Ooh, Zier knows something's going to work here. She didn't show her card there. Moves to the outside lane here. But Zier found something and decided to, sh to not go for it. Yeah. I want to tip you in early, because we know she can make moves. We saw what she did to Daffin. Oh, sends it goes. in! Yep. Sends it in turn one! Sends slide it in! Job. Slide job! Bump draft! Wildman holds on to it, but Zier decided to take a go for it. We're coming to... We're on two to go. We're coming to the white flag. Can she do it in one more time? It's gonna be a Look. hard ask, but not impossible. No attack, no chance. She thought it was her best chance. She took it. And very, very well played by Wileman. Moved her out of the way, but didn't. Obviously, obviously, both of them are still going. Final mm -hmm. lap in the air. Merrick Watchorn 
because of them battling, has opened up a second gap in the number 91. This is what it looks like. Chasing career win number 20. Merrick Watchorn. Again, talked to him early this morning. Said he wanted to do 11 race wins again this season. Wanted to go back to back on that feat. He's going to get five on the season right now. Merrick Watchorn wins at Las Vegas. And a hard fall battle between this top three. All three of them should be proud for the scraps they had. Absolutely. Patrick Hernandez is going to bring it home in fourth. And Kyle Dershman is going to round out your top five. Obviously, your biggest winner is Kyle Dershman. Brought it from 17 spots gained. Going to get a nice top five. So hat tip to him as well. But Merrick Watchhorn, where win number 20. Making a name for himself here in the Twiggy Series. Twiggy iRacing Series. Honestly, congratulations. A congratulatory bump there by his teammate, Patrick Hernandez. Bump there by James Thompson. But Merrick Watchhorn officially a 20 race winner in the Twiggy iRacing Series. Winning moment for Merrick Watchorn. He's going to do the sentimental burning it down here. By the way, if you're still in the audience, not go anywhere. We're going to see, most likely, hope we can get the top three in here for interviews. We will get top three interviews. Yeah, we will get to see your Wildman and Watchorn. Mm hmm. So, Merrick Watchorn, 20 career race wins. Milestone for the number 91 for Watchorn Motorsports, the lead driver. Really good job by Patrick Hernandez. Obviously, vacation early in the season kind of immediately put him behind the eight ball. But a fourth place finish tonight by the number 19 of Hernandez. Kyle Dershman fifth, up 17 spots. Our biggest gainer tonight in this race. Doug Betts finished where he started in sixth. Then James Thompson seventh, Maurice Gamillion in eighth. Then Chris Phillips and Matt Dyer rounded out the top 10. But obviously, you see the celebration going on for Watchroom Motorsports. Race win number five on the season. Career win number 20. Mm -hmm. At the pace he's going, we may see him match his car number soon. <laughs> All righty. So, watch runs finish this celebration. We'll start, we'll work up the podium progression here. We'll start with Lilac Zero, third place finisher here tonight. Phenomenal race between them and Wileman. Bylon for that second spot. We'll talk to her here. Inside. Sorry to <laughs> clear. Hey, Lilac. This is Carmen from the ABM booth. You got a copy? Oh, hi. Yep, copy. All righty. Phenomenal race between you and Wylam in third place here tonight. Just an absolutely phenomenal battle between you and Wylam. Can I just walk us through it? It looked like it was something you kind of were shaping up for. Just kind of walk through your progressions. What, how, what was kind of going through your mind there? Oh well, it was hard racing. Uh, you know, maybe a little on the edge of what's a lot, what's fair, but you know, I don't know. Uh, I just tried to get clear because it's so hard to get so hard to get past on the inside, and I tried to set it up to go to the outside, and I just couldn't do it. So I finally got a run to the inside, and I was going to take it, but I didn't quite make it. And luckily, we both kept going. Uh, I'm glad we didn't wreck there. That would have been bad. You look at like how this race had went, because obviously you were a top five car uh, just about all night long. Um, started this race in fifth. Obviously, despite the different fish strategies and early on in this race, you were able to stay in that range. How? Obviously, we talk about like you know you you love Richmond. How obviously this rate this track means a lot for you now on a personal level with screen to speed. Obviously now in the rearview mirror. But can I just walk through kind of how different it was getting ready for this race compared to what it was, you know, getting ready for tracks like Atlanta or Kentucky or Kansas? What made this track so so much better in Motun to you? I don't know. It's just uh, it's a really interesting track. It's got the bumps in turn one. It's got, you know, the turn turn four comes up on you fast. The wall's really you know, a danger. Uh, it's just a... Uh, I don't know, just something about this place, I, I like it. You could run high, you could run low. Uh, you got to save tires, but it's 
This is one of the better one and a half mile tracks, I think. Well, obviously it did you, you know, the phenomenal job tonight that 89 Ford in third place, your first podium in this competition. And obviously we have some dirt racing tomorrow night uh, for the starting that showdown series. So before we really kind of let you go and let you celebrate a, a first podium in the series tonight, a phenomenal race and a phenomenal battle there between you and Brady Weilerman. If there's anyone who would shout out and say thank you to Lilac, the floor is yours. Congratulations. First podium in Twiggy I Racing Series competition in its third place. Well fought battle. Uh, yeah, thanks to you for broadcasting. Thanks for uh, thanks to Twiggy for for hosting this this league. Uh, thanks to Merrick, uh, and uh, thanks to all my friends and family at home. Well, Lilac, enjoy it. Enjoy the podium. Obviously, we'll see you tonight at Bristol for some dirt track racing. But Lilac, enjoy the podium tonight, and uh, we'll be seeing what next week brings. Thank you. That was Lilac Seer, third place finisher here tonight. We'll hear from Wildman's perspective on that move at the end of the race. Obviously, second place for him was able to hold on to it. Phenomenal driving by both of them. But we'll see what happened with uh, with Brady Wildman's perspective here. Brady, this is Carmen from the ABM booth. You get a copy. Yep. That was a battle for the ages. Obviously, Another second place finish it matches your your previous best at Sonoma just a few weeks ago. Obviously, we watched that battle between you and Lilac Seer. She had a slide job. You moved her out of the way. She seems to think that it was all pretty well for a game. What was your perspective on that? Uh, well, it's racing. I knew like as soon as I saw her uh, dive in, I was like, uh oh, this ain't, this isn't gonna be good. But I'm I'm lucky that she cleared me enough where I could just keep holding my line and doing what I was doing, so, I mean, it's racing. I was, I probably would have done the same thing. Obviously, tonight was just a really good competitive fight. Obviously, not as fortunate as what we what you would have expected. Obviously, Alec Daffin got collected going through lap traffic, and it really hindered his race. Um, but for you on a personal level, it's that level of consistency. Three podiums in a row now between Sonoma, Richmond, and tonight really kind of puts you back on that level footing that you you look at Daytona, look at how wild Daytona was, being able to rebound from that. You found that momentum, you found that groove. How vital is it holding on to that? And obviously, how important has it been? Obviously, you added Chris Howell to your team uh, during the week. Um, how important has it been kind of rebounding and rebuilding that team um, and trying to make those upgrades stick? Uh, yeah, so, I mean... Luke and Jaden weren't showing up, so I had to I had to do something about it. So I was like, you know, let's uh, let's remove them and see what we could get. I was talking with Alec the whole week, and then I get a message from Chris saying, "You want to merge?" I was like, "Oh, sure." I mean, because I know Chris. I mean, he's obviously a really really good driver. He just got caught up in some stuff today. Um, so I was like, "All right, that would be good." So uh, hopefully next week at Martinsville we can um, prove ourselves. Maybe we could earn one, two, three. Um, yeah, the momentum obviously has been great. I finally got out of the phase where I've been rocking every race. Um, it just feels good because this is where I should be. This is where I should be, and I know I definitely have the speed to win after tonight. Um, a very heartbreaking loss, uh, but, you know, it was a fun battle between Merrick and I, and Merrick deserves it, so congrats to him. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Phenomenal race for Merrick. We'll talk to him in a second. Um, but before I let you go, obviously you talk about Martinsville. These next three or four races are going to be big. Um, you look at Martinsville, you look at Darlington after that. Watkins Glen, obviously we know what Watkins Glen has meant and, and how fast you've been on the road courses in general. And then Talladega, where it kind of it's gonna be a team game. Looking at those next four races, you said you know you know you can win. You've shown it repeatedly that you've got that ability of those four races, sort of what kind of pops out in your head as being, you know, that race for you. Uh definitely Watkins Glen. Um I feel like if, uh, if Rudy shows up again, um, I know I'll probably be more prepared for that race. Uh, I know what I expect. I know the level of competition at road courses now. Obviously, it's it's much different than Sonoma. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but um, I feel like I could definitely get that first win there. If um, if I don't have these next four races, I don't know Martinsville and Darlington. They're not really one of 
not really my strong tracks. And then um, Talladega. I mean, I'm pretty good in the plate races. As long as I don't get wrecked, I normally stay up front to avoid them all. So we'll see what happens. Well, obviously, a lot of fun watching you battling tonight. The number 51 looks phenomenal. Um, before we let you go, again, obviously, you, you, we kind of talked about the team, but if there's anyone in, in particular you want to shout out and say thank you to, Brady, the floor is yours. Congratulations on another second-place finish, matching your career best tonight. Yep, thank you. Um, first, uh, I just want to thank Merrick for running the league. Obviously, it wouldn't be done you now. Finishes like those wouldn't have happened without him and what he created. It's uh, It's been a true pleasure to run in here. Um, definitely want to thank uh, Chris for joining the team and obviously Alec for joining as well. You know, our team Summit Esports. We're definitely uh, going to show our speed next week at Martinsville. Uh, I want to thank my parents for watching, for you guys for broadcasting. You guys do a great job. Absolutely. Well, Brady, enjoy the podium. Enjoy the second place finish three in a row for you tonight with some more uh, interesting racing coming up. Brady, we'll be watching you. Obviously, championship contender, it looks like that number 51 is going to end up being here in no time at all. But Brady, enjoy the podium. Fantastic watching your race tonight, and uh, we'll see you next week at Martinsville. All right. Thank you, guys. That was Brady Weilman's second place finisher here tonight. Matches a career best at Sonoma just two weeks ago. Now it's time to interview the 20 race winner in this series. We'll talk to Merrick Watchman here in just a moment. Merrick, this is Carmen from the ABN booth. You got a copy? Got a good copy. All righty. We talked about it this morning off uh, off screen. You're like, hey, I would love to do. I'd love to win eleven races again this season. For eight races in, you've won five. Tonight was a phenomenal race on your end. Career win number twenty, but it wasn't as straightforward. You had a lot on your hands to deal with. Kind of just walk through how that race kind of ended up for you and, and how you had to handle that pressure because it was three cars in a box at the end. Yeah, no, um, yeah, I just give a shout out to Alec, Brady, and Kyle. They were giving me a run for my money tonight. Uh, I was definitely going to have to earn it to win it. And in typical fashion, we just went out of our way. You know, we just, you know, zeroed in, locked in, and just focused on our long run speed and just said, all right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get out of the way and go for it. So, I mean, it, it was a fantastic race. Very, very challenging Las Vegas race, but win number 20. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Obviously, a milestone race here. Obviously, you, you talk about 20 race wins. It's very hard to do that, especially in iRacing, where you have so many people come in and, and, and you, you see just how many people, you see the rotating list of faces. You, you Just looking at how many people have won in Twiggy already, to be in that list the way you have been is insane. You look at yeah. the next few races coming up. You look at Martinsville, which Bray Wildman saying, hey, Summit's got an ability to do some really cool stuff at Martinsville. But you look at Martinsville, you look at Darlington, you look at Watkins Glen and Talladega, and you look at what your team did tonight. All three cars, three of the four cars top 10, obviously a technical issue for, for Jacob Elkins left him out of the running early. Hernandez, we're like, okay, Hernandez, you know, dusting off some of that rust, top four tonight. He was doing stuff that no one else was doing until late in that race. Ran the outside line, got a top five out of it. Really good run for him. For the team, obviously, and we talked about this, I believe we talked about this at Phoenix. We talked about team synergy being important. Some of these sports looks like they're getting it. Where is where is Washington Motorsports at? Obviously, you look at how, where this team's at right now. How is that synergy beginning to build now that we're getting through that opening stands of the season? How is that synergy building? And and what do you what do you think of the races to come? Obviously, You've been by and far the the class of the field. You've been the measuring stick. But how confident have you have you been in seeing just how much Patrick's improved and how much Maurice has improved these last few weeks to get them consistently in the top ten like this? As as I told my guys, I like practice. I help them out, tell them different things, what type of brake bias to run, what type of steering ratio, what type of you know offset. I really work with my guys, and you know we 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 do a lot of strategy talk throughout the race. We talk about when we're going to pit and when we, we we're very, you know, tuned up and, you know, ready to fight for this championship for the owner's championship, including the driver's championship. I'm just happy Patrick's coming in swinging because Patrick has always been a very consistent driver. He did it all last year. He was Mr. Consistent, which was, was his nickname last year. He was had zero wins all year long and was second the points behind me by only maybe like one hundred and twenty eight 
to even up to all as close as it got to me from 50 points and even leaving the leading the points lead at one point because i was able to show up for one race last year so he he was known as mr consistent so the fact that he finished fourth i i i just i expect more from him i want him to win a couple more races um and so it's a fantastic you know opportunity to see my guys go up there and challenge for the win and everything else and just have a fantastic race i mean uh, moving forward uh you know that's that's our goal is just like hey you know let's you know improve on this let's improve on that you're a little struggling here maybe back up your corners here or do this or do that and it, it just comes down to you know you know with the team synergy it's just you know making sure my guys are happy and make sure everyone is squared away and you know you know pumped for this race so i'm i'm very happy from the recovery from maurice uh, coming back, uh, finishing eighth place, which yeah. is fantastic after getting an EOL. So all I can ask for is what I got tonight and, you know, just keep on pushing, keep on trucking. And hopefully we can, you know, dominate both the owner's championship and hopefully I can get my second, uh, championship this year. Obviously you look at just how much everything has, has been so far this season. You look at the quality we had tonight, the, the long green flag runs, the pit strategy that kind of came into play. We're going to enter a brand. It's a, it's a completely different atmosphere next week at Martinsville. Sort of how are you prepare for that race, knowing that it's going to be a lot more physical and, and, and how do you manage being patient? It's a lot easier being patient when it's wide open, like what Las Vegas was tonight. But obviously, Martinsville is the entire opposite of that. How you do you manage being patient and, and try to uh, to capitalize on just getting back into into the winning circle here and and getting that streak going again? Um, just keeping my head cool the whole time. I mean, that's that's all I can really ask for myself and including my guys. It's just you know remembering that it's a short track race. All right, tempers are gonna be flying. Um, practice is key and remembering what works well, well with me and putting in the laps and the time this week I actually haven't had any practice time until basically when I jumped on with an hour of practice as unfortunately you know real life and having to work so much so you know it comes down to trusting my abilities trusting what I can do behind the race car and you know hopefully I can you know keep doing that throughout the season and just you know keep trucking along so it uh, comes down to just being consistent, really and honestly, and working on what works best for me and my driving style, what works overall. So can't really ask for more, and we can just keep going and see what happens. Well, Merrick, you had a phenomenal race tonight. Obviously, career win number 20, race win number five on the season. Before we let you go and let you properly celebrate, if there's anyone to shout out and say thank you to Merrick, the floor is yours. Congratulations once again, a race winner. Five wins out of eight races. Not a bad stat at all. Nah, it's not at all. I just want to thank Twiggy. I want to thank uh, QSA, the Capture of the Occasion. And I want to thank uh, all my admin teams. You know, we, we got a few, you know, he debate uh, the later during the race. So a lot of people are a little frustrated. So we're going to have to go back and double check. So hopefully we don't lose any drivers and we can keep our field healthy and, you know, growing. And just thank y'all for, you know, of course, you know, coming in and showing us off and showing the love we deserve and, you know, us giving you guys a fantastic product. So all we can do is keep pushing forward and have a fantastic season and hope everyone's happy at the end of the day. Absolutely. Again, Merrick Watchorn race winner here tonight. Absolutely phenomenal effort. Always fun watching you race here. Um, 20 race wins, nothing to nothing to laugh at at all congratulations on it merrick um enjoy the race win enjoy the celebration and uh we've seen you we've seen you monday night i believe it's htl all star night so we'll be seeing you tomorrow night or not, not tomorrow night monday night monday night i'll see y'all there carmen see ya have a good night later you too that was merrick watchhorn race winner here tonight phenomenal effort for him We'll look through the race results. This is what it looks like. Merrick Watchorn won the race tonight. I had a Brady Wildman Lilac like Zero. We heard from our entire podium tonight. Patrick Hernandez finished fourth for Watchorn Motorsports. Phenomenal job for him. Kyle Dersham finished fifth. Top five for him. Biggest mover in the race. Of 17 spots from where he started this race from. Doug Betts finished where he started in sixth place. The number three car. 
uh, managing to break even tonight. James Thompson finished seventh. Maurice Gamillion finished in eighth place ahead of Chris Phillips and Matthew Dyer. John Holiday finished 11th ahead of R.J. Buchanan, Chris Howell, Kyle Smith. Uh, unfortunately, Kyle Smith ran out of fuel there at the end of the race, so fell out of the top five conversation. Josh Jernigan finished in 15th, last car on the lead lap. Callie Bajant, 16th, the first car one lap down. Then it's Dennis Crosby, John Bawada Jr. finished 18th. Again, Bajant, Crosby, Bawada all one lap down in this event, as was John Ledger. Two laps down was Brad Slagle, who had the toe, was involved in an accident on lap 100, and couldn't ever really recover. Jack Stanley finished five laps down, was a wounded car most of this race. Harley Barletta retired just after the lap 100 mark, as did Alec Daffin, and Jacob Elkins had an early technical issue in his race after just three laps. But that's going to do it from us here at Las Vegas. Tomorrow night, it's truck racing in the dirt. It's Dirt Bristol. It's the Saturday Night Showdown Series for ARCs. And then Sunday will also be, uh, be me and Kevin Young once again in Bristol for the a Square Cup Series at Bristol Dirt. But that's going to do it for us here in Las Vegas. On behalf of my co-commentator, Kevin Young, on behalf of everyone here for Twiggy, for the Twiggy Air Racing Series, and everyone here on ABN Studios, I'm Carmen Hardy. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, enjoy your weekend wherever you are in the world. We'll be seeing you at Bristol.